Hello and welcome to the Walter Bosley channel. And today, I'm sitting here looking at the screen. Today we're revisiting a topic that is, of course, probably my favorite in the world of weird. And that's time and time phenomena and in particular time travel or, you know, at the very least, the human perception of moving through time. Yeah, all that stuff. As you know, I wrote a time travel novel, I Will See You in Time, which you can find at walterbosley.com, but you hear me talking about it a lot. And uh, again, this is one of my favorite subjects. And the guest today is someone who, in my opinion, has put out there really um, an outstanding hypothesis uh, an, an, an idea that, um, well, really resonates with the works and the ideas of um, Jack Finney, the author, and Richard Matheson, both of whom I talk about a lot here, uh, where their time travel hypotheses um, are concerned. And as you know, that has to do with using human consciousness to um, see across time, time space, and perhaps even use as an anchor to pull yourself backwards in, uh, in time, you know, where um, Finney, Matheson, and C.W. Chanter are concerned. So I want to welcome everyone, and uh, I'm going to bring in C.W. right now. And here we go. C.W. Channer, welcome to the Walter Bosley Channel. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. This, this, is, this is overdue because, as I was telling them, um, I have, for a long time, really, really liked your nostalgia time loop hypothesis and method. And what, what, you, you could have fooled me. Really? Oh, no, hell no. I'm always saying, I'm always referring to when I talk about this, particularly when we talk about Finney and Matheson, the two authors, and their human consciousness um, uh, central, um, what am I trying to say? Their human consciousness driven uh, methods of time travel that they have dramatized in their great novels. And um, your nostalgia time loop idea fits right in with that. So before we go further, why don't you describe, you know, just the kind of initial nutshell, because we're going to be getting into the nuts and bolts deeper of it. But, it, you know, in a sentence or two, what is the nostalgia time loop? Well, you had to preface that because you tried to give me, you have to defense me in because I'll be here all night. So <laughs> basically it's this, I mean, it started back in, in 2000, you know, I got the impression that you know, time was looping back on itself, that everything that I was seeing around me was basically just a rehash and a repeat of the 80s. And the more I looked at it, I started to get the impression of what I started to call the 20-year nostalgia loop. Mm -hmm. And I started to collect, you know, impressions of this and instances of this you know, in pop culture and just noticing how mm -hmm. basically everything that we would see in media was just a repetition of, of what was basically, I started to call it the 20 year nostalgia loop, but you know, people have, have noticed different, different loops, but where, where it kind of, you know, you know, becomes really apparent with what you're talking about is that in 2018, picking up on uh, something that I was calling CW Chanter's secret space program whistleblower school and lampooning what we were seeing with um, the the uh, shenanigans with certain people um, <laughs> and, and to avoid, uh, you know, messing up uh, myself with right. active litigation that is still, <laughs> still, is still, it's still going against me. Talk about yeah. being caught in a loop. Yeah. Um, a hell loop. with with people that you know just are basically you know storytellers you know yes. the last narrative great narrative with you know young yes as, you know, oh, yeah. weavers yeah. of today mm -hmm. uh i took this nostalgia loop theory and wedded it to the, this concept of of time travel and, and basically uh, almost instantaneously almost in just a eureka moment just talking to my YouTube live audience said, here's what we're going to do. We had the secret space program, time travel technology. Right. We're only go we're going to concentrate on this using, you know, weaponizing this 20 year nostalgia loop. 
you we're go. going to so we started in 2018 we're going to go back to whatever it was we're going to go back and we're only the way that we were going to methodologize this time travel thing is we're going to only you would only listen to music only read books read comic books watch movies and watch tv shows play video games from a given year Right. You know, so for example, if it's 2024, you're young and you're using this 20 year nostalgia loop theory, 2004 is your anchor year. You're only going to listen to music, watch TV shows, watch movies, play video games, read comic books from 2004. Barring that, if you're going bananas and can't do it, you'd only, you know, make exceptions for things that you actually knew that you experienced from 2004. And the theory would be is that by doing this, you would actually warp yourself back to 2004. And I got to tell you something, Walter. And mm -hmm. the, also the theory was that, you know, the collective consciousness and the kind of concentrated group collective consciousness was, <clears throat> and it started off as a kind of a, a play acting, a kind of live action role-playing game, a LARP amongst sure. me and, the, and my YouTube audience, my small YouTube audience was that if we do this, you know, one person's on Australia, another person's in South Wales, two people are in Detroit. We're going to do this collectively we're going to do this collective working. We're going to actually screw up the time and we're going to do this thing. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you something, though it was, you know, a bit of a LARF and we were just kind of doing it to kind of lampoon stuff. Yeah. Stuff went down. And when we did that original <laughs> thing in, in 2018, uh -huh. you know, I guess headed back to 1998, People had effects. I mean, you know, people sure. had relapses. People said that, you know, they really experienced these these things, these effects. And, you know, as we, you know, started to do it, I really got, you know, a fever for the flavor of a Pringle. I really became obsessed with this idea. And, you know, uh, you know, you, on my time, you know, I have a, a role playing game channel where I started incorporating into a kind of a game. And I really concentrated on this and, and really doing it and calling it a form of chrono magic and i mm -hmm. gotta tell you the more i stuck with it and the more i kind of you know worked with it and told people to work with it the more people kind of picked up on the fact that if you did this if you concentrated your energy you would experience these forms of how you want to characterize it now i would tell people it's not really time travel per se but it's a form of time dilation mm -hmm. or whatever but you would especially notice this sort of you know, weird thing with it also kind of interacting with this notion of, especially in 2024, there is no present moment anymore. I mean, whatever you can have different eras and it kind of also kind of gets for Casey because you would try to describe these things like nostalgia loops. Yeah. And it kind of gets weird because it's easy to do it now with traveling to different moments in time in the present moment of 2024 because since easily since 2010, there is no present moment. Hmm. Because whereas the 50s, the 40s, the 60s, the 20s, there were definable things and characteristics yes. of a generation. The yes. era, the art, the music, the culture. There is no culture of the 2000s and on. It's there's weird. No there's no distinction. Or culture. Right. We're, we're, it's, there is, it's all nebulous. It all has just been, we seem to be going into the nineties eventually reluctantly, mm -hmm. but for the last 24 years, we've been stuck in the eighties. I mean, it's been this endless eighties nostalgia loop for, I don't know how long. So that's it. That's the best I could do for your keeping it. To well, a sentence two. That wasn't a sentence or two. That was more than a sentence, but that's yeah, what I can do for my lunatic But assignment. that opens up a whole discussion, which clearly we're not going to cover in the, the hour and a half total that we're, you know, we're here today for. So oh, already, up, already, already I'm telling you, you're, you're probably going to be coming back. Or we're going to be talking more about this because um, the, the what you described um, this is right in line with the general direction that the authors Jack Finney and Richard Matheson, authors of um, uh, Time and Again and Somewhere in Time, uh, right. put out there in their time travel novels. And um, I'm a big fan of those methods, um, fictitious though they are in presentation, uh, because... Uh, you know, the human consciousness is a powerful thing. And when you're talking about, I, I think the key to um, nostalgia doing this is 
we have all these memories in our own brains, right? And when you start focusing on a, a, just a particular slice of that, uh, it it's going to bring it up. So you were talking about the folks who participated in the experiment, then they were reporting to you, hey, you know, I'm I'm having some weird experiences with this. And, you know, it's, it's as if perhaps it was beginning to manifest. Uh, the idea is to get it to manifest externally. Um, but would that be, you have to ask yourself, would that be, okay, um, not a simulation, but more of a display, some type of external display so that you're not actually traveling back, but you're keying into the, the specific memories that the, say for in, in music, I find music to be a very strong um, uh, resource for this. But if you could key in and it's kind of like one of those uh, holographic displays that you see in movies that they do with computers, you know, p perhaps um, it could be, you know, something like that. And uh, th this idea, this really intrigues me. Whether you're physically traveling back or not, what intrigues me about this is your method, as you describe, is that you could go back and review um, in the details, in the specific replay, past memories, I think, through your through your system. What's some of the specific instances of weirdness that you didn't expect that actually resulted from this? Well, I mean, the, the, the real thing is this is that, um, well, things is that you, well, there's a lot of this. It's like, uh, you know, we talk about things like the Mandela effect, mm -hmm. but you know, what, what it really is, is not so much things that it's the, the, the reminder oftentimes for me, it's just, uh, it's a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not just what it, for me, the biggest thing is it's a couple of things like all practices. It's, it's number one, it's a focus. You're doing mm -hmm. something sure. intensely. Yeah. So it, it can wake you up and it can give your life a purpose. Mm -hmm. So you're paying attention. You're not just listening to music and just having things randomly. You're intentionally deciding to only listen to music for a given era. Mm -hmm. So you're you're even you're paying attention to things. So you're focusing in. But to try and concentrate on on the question that you're asking, the things that, that you notice is that you 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 can realize things about the past that that can shock you because you you can realize um either how much time has passed or how things have changed or mm -hmm. how things have not changed currently mm -hmm. um whether it's it's how much you know what 10 years used to represent versus what 10 years represents now right and that can be you know focusing for you either realizing you know how your own perception changes mm -hmm. or whether that focuses you on your mortality or, or whether or not that says something about the world and how it works. Mm -hmm. Because as we're getting older, look, if a person lived in the 1800s, mm -hmm. the process of going from the ages of 20 to 30 is different than the process of, of going from 20 to 30 from 2010 to 2020. Okay. Because the technology has changed yeah. the way that we, interface with the technology changes the way that the psychoreactive drugs in our culture changes the, the 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 way that caffeine is is influxed into our system on a regular basis mm -hmm. changes everything affects the way our perception of time and the way our, and just the, our longevity changes yeah. the notion True. that a 20 year old or a 30 year old might think of themselves as being our life is going to sunset at 60 versus thinking that our life is going to sunset possibly at a hundred. But coming, you know, just, you know, or just also just, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard to put into words, you know, what, what, you know, what you might, you know, have experienced about it. Because mm -hmm. like any mystical experience, 
you I I've had this. This is this is the this is the real thing, Walter. Mm-hmm. Words escape it. You can tell a person about jumping out of a plane. Mm. But it's not going to do it. You just you either right. you, you tell a person, look, it's like describing meditation. If you describe meditation and say, well, look, we're going to sit in this room for 12 hours, a person is going to be like, have a perception of that as, well, that's that sounds incredibly boring. And it's like, well, no, I get it. And I understand why sitting from your perspective and perception, why that seems that way. Mm-hmm. But all I can tell you is that the juice is worth the squeeze. Mm-hmm. It's going to change and it, you're going to understand what's going to happen. But here's, here's the thing. When you were, when you were describing what you were just describing, the philosophical notion of, of the brain in the jar experiment is, is such. We perceive what we perceive. Mm-hmm. And the Hindu conceptions of Advaita philosophy, a lot of them come to, oh, I'm God. If you go crazy with it, you can go into all sorts of dimensions and all sorts of, you can potentially develop all sorts of problematic attitudes about people in the world around you. (laughs) But at its core is this notion of there's nothing that you're going to experience that is not flavored by your brain. Look, I under have gone through a lot of transformations and deal with competent mental health professionals who have let me know and informed me that I, there's a lot of things that I might think about the world and perceive about the world that I I need to check myself on because there's nothing that, that I experience that isn't processed through this, this, my, my perception. And it's like looking through the world through rose colored glasses. Hmm. Yeah, okay. We perceive the world that we perceive, and it, it's it's a two-way street. So it doesn't matter if you're traveling through time physically. If you engage in a process that affects, whether it's you take a psychedelic drug or if you engage in a process that affects your perception, it's like meditation. Mm-hmm. If you chill out and relax and de-stress yourself, your world and your perception of reality will improve. It's not that violence in the world decreases. It's not that there's peace in the Middle East, but your stress level and your the, the amount of cortisol in your system decreases. Your experience of reality improves. Mm-hmm. There's, there's an increase in your life satisfaction based on the fact that you've got more tools in your toolbox. And in the same way, if, if you are changing the, the elements of the world that are in your control mm-hmm. to systematically bring yourself to another, that's, you know, like time after time. If you systematically bring yourself back to an earlier place in time mm-hmm. to the degree that you can, yeah, you'll, you'll key in a lot of things. And what gets weird is, look, it's true. I can tell you that when I systematically and a lot of people were systematically bringing ourselves, and that was the part of weaponizing this nostalgia loop because we, we see and perceive that there's so much that of our reality that's predicated upon these, these anniversaries and and these, it's always the transformers and it's always GI Joe. And, And if we bring ourselves back, you see more and more, look, attention, you know, like energy goes where attention goes. If you, zone yourself in on something and it goes there it's you start noticing everywhere Mm -hmm. concentrate on it and the world's already kind of predisposed to go there it increases that and then you start having these like you know synchronistic moments and all of a sudden it's like everywhere like all of a sudden you know um Everyone seems to be talking about it. You know, all of a sudden you notice that, um, for example, like on May 10th was the 30th anniversary of this thing 
that was the uh the it was the biggest um ufo kind of thing that happened i think over the great lakes in michigan okay and what's funny about it is that me and everyone in my in my live uh in my youtube audience had never heard about this incident at all we had never heard about it but if you go to the newspapers it was as big as for this area it was as big as the phoenix lights it had been in the newspapers, and not only had it been in the newspapers, it was covered in the news, and they brought it back on the 10th anniversary, on the 25th wow. anniversary. It was a big deal. It MUFON covered it, and yet I was aware of the Phoenix Lights, but I had never heard about this thing. But on this anniversary, it was the same day that they had announced the death of the guy that had invented or come up with Dragon Ball like in Dragon Ball Z. Oh, okay. So also interesting about that was that he hadn't actually passed on that day. He had passed like eight days earlier and they had just made the announcement on that day. Mm -hmm. But what we had also noticed was one of the encounters, um, one of the persons I witnessed described what was clearly kind of eerily sounded like this fiery thing, you know, falling to the earth. And someone in my live chat happened to have noticed that someone that looked like an eyewitness that was noticed in the newspaper or the person that noticed this fireball falling from the sky, they clearly identified. Now, the person could be trolling me and bullshitting me, thinks that it was their uncle. Interesting. Okay. Now... We're on a 30-year loop for or 35-year nostalgia loop for a PlayStation 1 game that this 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 manga artist that invented Dragon Ball Z was mm -hmm. also involved in called uh I think it's called a uh, Chrono Trigger. That okay. is a time travel based Japanese RPG that mm -hmm. I had purposely added to one of my playlists for um i'm obsessed with these you know collecting these instances of you know things on these you know 20 25 year 30 year nostalgia loops so you start noticing things like this like things that keep on coming up on these on these loops and on these nostalgia loops and if you know on my um you know my patreon when we start following these loops and start just looking up these specific days we start noticing that there are these days where these things start to just always there are days when nothing happens, but there mm -hmm. seems to be these days when nothing happens. And we constantly are remarking that, but for the fact that we're looking at these loops and we're looking at these nostalgia patterns, we wouldn't have seen it. And we, we, when we did the thing for that 30th anniversary, we were acting, we were asking, because we talk about things like, you know, their theories, look, you know, it's one of these things. I'm a very, I try to be a pragmatic, practical, scientific guy. I have a very bad reputation amongst the woo-woo people, right? <laughs> people are, notice me as the guy that's like, sometimes people like me, and sometimes people think that I'm a real Mike West kind of D-bag. Yeah, I, I, catch hell, I catch hell, I catch hell, I catch hell for not um, supporting or backing uh, certain things that some people would just assume that I would. And right. because I say, well, there's a there there's a issue with the credibility of that particular thing, and yeah, so I, I know what you mean. I know where you're coming from on that. So we have this thing called retro causality that I didn't get from woo woo people. I didn't get from Michael Cremo or someone else. I got that from quantum physicists who talk about, well, look, our and Albert Einstein is like, look, the past is is we have this conception of the future coming before us but that really has to do with human perception that has nothing mm -hmm. to do with the physics of time or how reality works that is entirely predicated just on the way our kind of our minds work and mm -hmm. the way that we perceive things based on our biological structure of moving you know the way that we perceive journeys through space-time continuum it has nothing to do with the fact of time moves like this it doesn't move like this that's just the way that we think of things right now and but i'm also aware of the fact that some scientific theories that i've been very attached to and people get very attached to get disproven and then some people say those disproven theories come back and we don't know what we don't know but 
And at the same time that that 30th anniversary of that thing happened, the very next day that AARO report comes out that everyone mm-hmm. goes, people always say, we want disclosure, we want disclosure, we want the government to tell us what's going on. And then the government tells you, okay, you want a disclosure? Here's disclosure. And everybody goes, well, we don't want that. That's right. Yeah. We they, want they that. Wanted, we don't want you to tell us that. Yeah. They, we they want wanted stuff. Yeah. They wanted their specific thing. You know, we, they, want, we want the good disclosure. We want the disclosure with the alien. Come on. Yeah. No, they they, they want want wanted their, thing. they wanted their MTV. They didn't want hard news. That's no, no, know, no, no. Exactly. Come on now. <laughs> now so, um, on, go ahead. Finish your thought. No, no, so that you know, that's basically that is like engaged in the process. What happens is this, is that, you know, you start you engaged in any practice, any sort of you know mystical you know any sort of magical or meditative practice. Mm-hmm. What you get out of it is is what you put out of it, what you put into it. But sometimes what you put into and what you get out of it can be freaky scary. Look, I've yep. had times where I've had to pull out of this practice because I was like I was going nuts. Yeah, you know, I, you'd spend you know forty five minutes trying to figure out what you were going to listen to because you had to figure out what you were going to listen to. Because it had to be from 1989, and then you thought to yourself, "This is psychotic behavior." <laughs> I got. I'm going to be late to Grandma's house because I had to figure out what the heck I was going to listen to because it had to be from 1989. That is doofatic. That is silly, stupid. Be- I I need to check myself into the sanitarium. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it, it's a bit Eddie Jessup, as I like to say, the character that uh, William Hurt played in Altered States. You know, kind of kind of focused. But I, I know what you mean. I had to, uh, after seven years of research and investigation and three books, um, I had to work on something other than my Empire of the Wheel writings because what I never expected when I started looking at simply what I thought was a historical um, serial murder case, that kind of thing with, with occult connections and motivations. Um, What happened in all that process was uh, being forced into the experience of synchronicity. And um, you, you begin to, when you, it, it, synchronicity is that thing in the abyss that they talk about. When you look into the abyss, it sees you and it looks back. Synchronicity is that thing that when you really notice it and start seeing it, you can't unsee it. You you cannot put that genie back into the bottle and you, you begin to see it. You begin to see all the synchronicities everywhere you look and you're seeing that, that it's the threads of the fabric of, of reality. And it can drive one mad if you're not careful with it. Number one, if you don't maintain your sense of humor, something I know you understand. People don't understand that that you've got to laugh about this stuff, no matter how seriously you take it. Because if you don't, that's where you you know you will go crazy is by um, taking yourself and it too seriously for too long of a time. Because as you say what you put into it, you're going to get some juice out of this. And particularly with synchronicity and time phenomena, um, it, uh, it, it, it shows no mercy, um, when you start looking at it. And even if you only take it to the extent of, of your own mind, right. You know, you start delving into your own memories of this external input, be it music or whatever. Um, now what you said about And I totally agree with this. I've talked about this with others. This idea in the last 24, 25 years, nothing's been distinct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, on the one hand, I would say, well, ooh, that makes going back to the prior decades easier because they are so distinct. You'll be able to find something to latch onto as an anchor. But then on the other, which would make the non distinct 25 years harder to find something to latch onto. But then again, on the other hand, maybe it would be easier when things are non-distinct because they're, they're more familiar to you anyway. Um, I, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? So part of you, so the thing is, so when I was doing this, this, this 20 year nostalgia loop stuff, and it's like, mm-hmm. I've started noticing that 
trying to go back to like a, an era like 2004 like what what i've really noticed is this a couple of things like um number one my i've kind of become noticing that it's really more like a 30-year nostalgia loop i think when i look at things like 20 years and 25 years i think that you start noticing that that's more like corporate models that's really like kind of uh societal things like you know mm -hmm like you know society divides things evenly like a hundred years right. 25 years 50 years yeah. and it seems like more organically it's like 30 years seems to be it seems to be 30 years divided by you know and half and 15 because i looked at like 2009 and you know um noticing that that sort of thing but what i what the problem is this is that if you try to go back to 2009 uh, what you see is that all that really 2009 is is a collection of 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 borrowed memories from the 80s and the 70s and the 60s. Mm -hmm. So I've wondered about like I have kids, you know, my my kids are, you know, um, where I would be, where I was in 1983, mm -hmm. and so I know that they're 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 forming memories and they're forming the same sort of experiences that I was at that age but I wonder about how that would work because when I was forming core memories you know a tv show would air at a certain time mm -hmm. like and it would come on once a week yes and it would come at a certain time and if you didn't catch it you'd have to rush home to catch it you would mm -hmm. have to you know, you and your friends would have to run home to catch it. And if, if you missed it, you were like, God, and you'd, and you'd, yeah. and you'd, you'd hope and pray would air again. And, and, if, and if, the, the, if the president of the United States had to had to break in with some sort of emergency yeah. broadcast or, yeah. God forbid, you know, Venezuelan miners got caught, those sons of bees, you know, <laughs> son of a gun, like, how dare you? Yeah. And it, it would, and and some of these shows would have an air of mystery. Like I remember, like a show like Robotech, like that would air on a like an an, early anime shows that would air on a Sunday early. Mm -hmm. It would be like, where the heck did this show come from? Like, what is it about? Like, what the heck? Happened? And you, and there was no internet, so there'd be like no information right. available. You'd have to kind of form your own idea about what the mm -hmm. heck some of these things were. But nowadays, you know, with everything on streaming services, you know, and also everyone was kind of plugged in. Everyone was watched. All the kids were watching generally the same shows. Like some kids would watch certain shows. Some kids would watch another show. But generally, everyone was kind of maybe there were distinctions as to gender. But for the most part, everyone was plugged in and watching the same sort of things. Right. Everyone had watched, had seen Star Wars. Mm -hmm. All the guys were watching G.I. Joe or Transformers. Like everyone knew and were plugged in all the sci-fi guys in the 90s were watching the x files you know everyone was plugged in it was much watch tv yep and so there was kind of this collective you know thing and because it would only wear once air once a week you know you had this experience and then you had time to kind of meditate upon it and have it work in your brain and, and think about it but now with everything streaming and all these other a million and three options, you know, the, the kids are just immersed in this kind of soup. And one kid is watching this show. The other kids are watching this other show. There's eight, like when it comes to anime and stuff, there's 18 bajillion different shows that are interchangeable and they come and they go and, and there's no kind of collective experience. Right. You wonder about how that's going to, you know, translate whether or not there's going to be this kind of home base to mm -hmm. go back to um and, and and we just don't know there's certain things that we can speculate upon but we we just won't know all that i can tell you is this is that you know i i i don't want to be necessarily a negative nelly about it but i i do i say these things like i have this like thing like hashtag no new music where i say to people like look there hasn't been a new form of music since 1997 and, sure. and the kids hate me for it, you know, like, and I'm not talking about my kids. When I talk about, look, I'm 48 years old. I'm going to be 49. When I say the kids, I'm talking about, I talk about, when I say the kids, I'm talking about 30 year old guys. Right. Yeah. You know I, hear I, mean? you. <laughs> I talk about the kids. I'm talking about 28 year old. I, exactly. The punks, the, the no good punks. I'm telling them to get off my lawn are 25 <laughs> year olds. You know what I mean? They got great. Yeah. But I tell them, I say, yeah. 
tell me a new form of music. And they're like, well, it's a punk band, but they sing about pirates. I'm like, you think that's a new form of music? You think that? Get over here. I'm going to kick your ass. You know what I mean? You just want to slap <laughs> exactly. them. You know what I mean? It's like there's been no form of new music since 1997. It's ridiculous. And there used to be new forms of music every friggin' every year there was a new thing. Yeah, but and it seemed like every new... five years there yeah. was some type of revolution. In, some... in... And yeah, forget about I it. I remember there... when I was uh, a little kid, 1970, 71. I was a little mm -hmm. kid, seven years old, eight years old. But I remember what was on the radio, what was popular. And by the time we got to 1975, there had been some drastic leaps you know, I mean, disco for crying out loud emerged, and and then by 1980, holy smokes, it, it was another another big leap. Uh, not to mention, people had much more diverse and eclectic tastes uh, back then because they were listening to this stuff on the radio. Um, today, you know, these darn kids, like we're saying, you know, I find that they're they're uh, most that I encounter their tastes are very narrow. And um, there's just some things they just will not listen to. Whereas, you know, when I was a kid, it, you listened to what was on the radio. And if you liked it, you liked it. It didn't matter, you know, what genre it was. And, and you know, film is very much like what you're saying, too. Everything is just a rehash of what came just before. Yeah, it's and, and, and unfortunately, like, it's, like it, it, you know, it's like, look, it's like at a time when everyone can make movies. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. If you go to these streaming services, it's a thousand and three rehashes of 80 slasher films. I mean, look, you, you, you yeah. mean, and even and what what I what I tell people is so scary is that I, you know, the linchpin is 15 years ago. It's 15 years since Rob Zombie, quote unquote, rebooted Halloween. And all yeah. it is, is that it's 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 it was yeah. the. 1980s slasher yeah. movies and what has it been since then 1980s slasher movies yeah so, so new under the sun it, it's like someone decided we're not gonna have distinction but between the eras but uh, to to uh, meander back to the the time phenomena aspect you know where for instance when you're talking about these TV shows like you remember what you watched as a kid and I've been these last few weeks um binging the detective series from the 70s, Mannix, which my dad used to watch when I was, and this series started in 1967. Um, you know, I was, I turned uh, four later that year, but um, I have memories of my dad watching Mannix and seeing Mannix on TV. And, and what I'm finding is, as I watch these episodes, there will be a car or a piece of clothing um, and it'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll remember that. I'll say, oh, wow, okay, I remember seeing those cars when they were either new or just a couple of years old. I remember, you know, my dad had a jacket like that or a tie like that, you know, or as you get further into 70s, a couple of garish leisure suits, you know, he had three. Oh, my God. But, um, you know, with, and, and music, wow, what's mind-blowing me with, with music is that um, uh, I've been listening to, my girlfriend turned me on to this YouTube channel called uh, Nemo's Dreamscapes. And it, <laughs> are you familiar with it? No, I just, I, the name alone, it's like sometimes the name is all you need to know. It's yeah, like, wow, it's, it's, it's I, I guess what it is, it's like music from the game Fallout where they take old music, but it's like playing in another room. Oh, and, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, Absolutely. and it's kind of yeah, echoey. Yeah. And the other night, I freaked her out because I said, you know, um, and and it's th this is like sleepy time music. When it's time to go to bed, it's just that's that's what we listen to. And um, and uh, I said the other night, I said, you know, it was some type of music from the 40s or 30s, and it's echoey and stuff. And I said, this gives me the impression of maybe. Um, what you hear as you're dying and moving to that other side, you're hearing in an, you're hearing in other rooms, different eras. And the first thing you hear, you know, you're going to hear voices, maybe ambient sound, but, but the music, because perhaps, you know, because music can be comforting. And when I'm listening to these Nemo's dreamscapes, 
to me, that's how my mind is interpreting it is, okay, when I do die, when I pass on, is there going to be some type of audible phenomena that, that is from the past, maybe from, you know, when I was, you know, a small child or something. And is that, you know, maybe the mind's way or the other side's way of comforting you. But at the same time, it, I told her, this is very eerie and spooky. It has a scary element, almost like the impact of the old uh, film Carnival of Souls. Um, it, it, I, I'm almost afraid, do I want to hear this because, you know, we want to live, we want to live forever, we don't want to die. And so if we equate that with, you know, death, which, you know, let's face it, a lot of these discussions we have about the woo and particularly time and time travel and stuff, this is all, people don't like to hear this, talk about things people don't like to hear. This is all um, part of that discussion to either hope uh, to avoid the the open acceptance of death, our mortality, or to maybe find a way that to make it easier. You know, we don't really cease to exist. We go into this other dimension, which I personally think, but I could well, be flat well, wrong. Yeah, <laughs> Well, look, I mean, well, look, I mean, we're all everything that we do, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're doing for some we're doing for some reason we're engaged yeah. in it, whether or not we're, we're horrified and we're having some sort of anxiety about it. Yeah. Or we're finding some sort of comfort, you know, in, in the process. We're, we're de depending on our level of, of intellectual capacity and depending on our level of you know engagement, like you're obviously actively engaged. You're wondering about it. You're wondering oh, yeah. about whether or not you're um trying to comfort yourself or you're in denial or if this is the way that it is um when some people are just you know you know happily just being like i believe in the lord jesus christ and when i die i'm going to heaven getting the kingdom of gold and yeah that's one way of handling it <laughs> and what's your mansion going to be like and is my my dog spot going to be there of course it's going to be there oh, yeah relations idiot you know what I mean? <laughs> like, in the, you know what I mean? And it's going to be great. You know what I mean? Like, and, you know, there won't be any of those people there or whatever. All this stuff. I mean, you know, it, it, it and it is, you know, and there's, there's, um, and what, you know, and if, if you're anxious, you know, the, the anxiety will, will catch in and you'll end up thinking about, about it. Um, I, I mean, I always wonder about these things oftentimes. I mean, it comes to me because when I've been involved in, if you're active and talking about these nostalgia loops and, and what comes to my mind is going through this process of, of, the, of thinking about the nostalgia loops, what it occurred to me, what, what I ended up experiencing and what I ended, a lot of what I ended up processing was a lot of it had to do with, you know, consumption. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it led me to actively involved having to engage in my, you know, consumer addiction because, you know, every year, uh, I would, uh, or every couple of months, I would become obsessed with a new era. Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to look to 2009, or I'm going to look to uh, 1989. 1987 is the year. It's all about 19. It's, uh, it's really it's all about, you know, really what it's all about is the 40 year loop. We're going 1984. Yeah. And yeah. I'd start ordering all these, you know, role playing games. And I'd, I'd end up, you know, spending, you know, that, you know, thousands of dollars. I last over the last, you know, three or four years, five years since 2000, since 2018, I don't know how much money I spent on books and stuff. And I realized like I have to stop buying books because the fact of the matter is even given a great life expectation, the, the probability that I'll read all the books that I've purchased, it's like, it's like between the quote by Schopenhauer and the quote by Annis Nen, they're both winners. Annis Nen said, people equate, uh, people buy so many books because they equate buying the book with purchasing the time to read them. I like that. Having the time to read them. And mm -hmm. Schopenhauer said people buy so many books because they equate purchasing the book with uh, purchasing the comprehension of the information contained within. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's all a fantasy. You buy this, all these books and, and I look at these books. I'm like, Holy crap. These are all real obligations of time. Yes, they are. I mean, it takes time to read a goddamn book. <laughs> yeah, indeed. I mean, I've got the executive functioning of of a, of a nematode. I mean, I really it's it's problematic. So I've got you know, like I've had to get a storage unit. And I look at this stuff, and it's it's a lot of this stuff is, is burdensome. But you, 
it's all if you it's any practice if you really engage in it you're trying to figure stuff out if you're mm -hmm. actively engaged in it you're trying to figure this stuff out but the thing with time and time travel is this i can go back to 1989 and i can meditate upon 1989 and i can meditate upon the notion of the the active fantasy of my 1989 my 1989 vibe and energy every time i've spent three extra days in 1989 mm -hmm. so if there's a ragnarok time battle that i'm going to go to mm -hmm. my 1989 is superior to other dudes 1989 i'm super powered for 1989 i'm gonna kick their asses but then I think to myself, what's the over under that that's the way the cosmology of the universe works? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then also what's the over under that 1989 is going to kick ass over there. 2024. I don't know. I, I really don't know. And then also, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it's just all these unknowns. And then also I think to myself, I'm still going to fucking die. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, no matter, no matter no what matter kind what, of master like, of time and space. And then also, no matter what I do, yeah. There's also this. I'll tell you that. Here's a here's here's to bring it all home. I've got this. These are the kind of notes that I'll have sometimes. Yeah. This is the, the me describing uh, 2024, 2014, 2000. It's basically me trying to describe uh, how the 30 year loop from 2024 back to 1979 intersects with the 50 with the the 2009 is 15 years ago and how like the 15 year lock year mm -hmm. like how the loops interact right yeah and i tried to describe this to my to my girls to my kids mm -hmm. and they look at me and then my ex-wife will look at me and i'll have the notes in my hand and there's these moments of clarity where i'll catch myself in the mirror and i'll be like no, I sound like a psycho. Like I, I sound like a math addict. Like I but, sound like a real crazy but, person. But, but that's if part of a, your. If there, was, if there was a person here, yeah. they'd be like, "Yeah, no, dude." And I know, and I get, it, and I'll be like, "No, you don't understand. I'm really this, this, this makes Walter Bosley." I can you know, relate to that. He wrote a book, so yeah. it shows what you know. Oh yeah, I'd be like, "Yeah, well, that guy." But but I'm just as nutty in that regard. And that's kind of part of our job as dads is to have, you know, that crazy side. I'm always um, taken by um, the intensity of the 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 I'm going to call it the memory phenomena um, it has to do with, the you know, we've all got that memory theater in our heads. Um, whether it's a particular song, like, you know, you have experimented with, you know, gaming, that kind of thing. But what I discovered was, um, and I, I didn't really expect this. I discovered, you know, I build kit models and, um, what I discovered through my model kit building was I, I got it in my head that I would do a replica of a pickup truck. My dad had when I was in junior high and high school, an old 65 Chevy. And uh, uh, it had its own unique um, custom-made um, camper shell on it. It had a custom bumper, and it had non-factory um, side mirrors. And I decided I'm going to do this as, a, as exact as I can possibly get it, replica, to my dad's truck. Right down to I'm using toothpicks and balsa wood to, to fashion the side mirrors. I used balsa wood and carved out from photos. I have two photos of this truck. Um, you know, the rear bumper, and I, I strive to uh, find the exact color that his truck was painted, analyze the photos to make sure he's getting the right shade, and on and so forth, the interior and everything. And what blew my mind was as I was doing all this and as uh, it was coming together, um, I had distinct memories of times, moments in that truck, trips that we took in that truck, things that emerged in greater detail than um, just, you know, remembering back. And I realized, whoa, the, the, the model can be this crystallization point, like a song, like music or movie or a game. But here's this physical object that as I'm looking at it, it's three-dimensional. 
it, it's 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 a vehicle or a portal in itself to go deep into my own memory, my own consciousness, my own psyche, and really pull up the files, so to speak. Um, uh, I think perhaps as they were, because when you were talking a minute ago, you mentioned something that, you know, you're talking about is your 2019 going to be greater than this guy's 2024. And what came to my mind was, you know, when we do have a memory, uh, there is the issue of how we're remembering it flavored with nostalgia is may not be exactly what actually how it actually happened right there's that whole you know there's that whole thing about oh yeah i remember that night sitting there with my dad while while he had a one of those bottles of ham's beer and his his potato chips and we were watching mannix in this episode but that could just be how the 60 year old walter is remembering that i'm wondering truly okay what was that moment actually like in reality and that's the thing that i would pursue well there's there's two things and so a couple things like number one mm -hmm. uh like watching an old movie that you remember seeing from your youth yeah that can be startling yes because one of the things that i notice is then we talk about this thing with we we touched upon before like the way now everything's available streaming one of the classic things that used to happen when i was a kid was Movies would be playing, the same movies would be playing all the time, but they weren't streaming. So you caught them when you caught them. Yes. And true. what would often happen to me was because you would catch the same movie, but you'd always catch these little snippets, it would almost be like certain movies would be like five or six or nine hours long. They almost seemed like infinite in length. Yeah. Because you would like catch these different parts at different times, so and you're filling in in like your mind. War, like Blade Runner was a classic example. Yeah, you would catch these. It was such an evocative movie visually, and there were so many scenes that were just you know long static shots, or you know where things were different, different things were happening, or just people would be walking in the rain. That it seemed like this kind of like infinitely lengthy movie, or like you, you just didn't know how long it actually was or what the thing was. Right. And then when you finally get an opportunity to see the whole thing just from start to finish, yeah, it's almost a dissatisfying experience because okay. that infinitely potential long movie that mm -hmm. had these 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 potential gaps where anything could have possibly happened mm -hmm. or this that constituted almost a world that you thought you could go into when it was defined and became finite and solidified and, and ultimately defined, it, it kind of dies a little, or you just remember like, Oh, or then all of a sudden when you're a child and also just your naivete as a viewer, the way things, you know, your sophistication as a viewer changes. I've seen so many movies now where, when I was a kid, I, I, I had no notion that it was a painting, a matte painting that was the background. And right. I see certain movies now where I'm like, holy crap, I can't believe I didn't know that that was just a painting. And that's so obviously not a grand vista in the background. There's, I, I can't believe that I didn't know that that was well, you, you you were because you were drawn in by that sleight of hand of watching the action and the that background that painting was peripheral and um, you know when you're when you're uh, particularly when you're a kid and there's things you don't know you get drawn in even deeper. I remember the depth you know that I was drawn into movies and TV shows that I would say probably i hate to say this because i love the art of cinema um i i don't think i've ever been drawn into the experience of watching a movie like that since i was probably you know in my late teens it seemed like i could really be drawn in and, and right. there was nothing around me no theater no driving whatever it was just the world of what i was watching on the screen and i could be drawn in and then of course you mature and you know, you come of age and stuff. And whereas you can enjoy what you're watching, you never quite lose that, you know, there's, there's nothing around you that that's a very rare experience um, with that. And, um, I, you know, I think it 
probably can't be helped unless you're, you know, in a in a small room with nothing but dark walls, and you and you really um, you really do it as an experiment to to draw yourself in. And so, if you were if you were to say um, advise the 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 viewer now on some type of experiment to do with nostalgia time loop, how, how would you, what, what would be your basic instruction to them if they want to experience this and experiment themselves? It really depends on the age of the person. But what I would say is this, is that, you know, look at like, say, start off with like, a like uh, if you're, you're a fairly older person like me or you, you mm -hmm. know, you know, the 20 year loop would just bring you back to 2004 and 2004 is kind of like not really anything. So if, if you go to like a 30 year loop, Mm -hmm. If we go back to um, 1994, mm -hmm. that's golden time. Yes. And I'm telling you, son, if you look at the fashion of the kids today, the big pants are coming back. And it seems like after being smoked out on the 80s for so long, it seems like reluctantly they're going into the 90s. And I think it's because they held on to the 80s for so long because of consumer culture. Yeah. But finally, they're accepting the fact that we're doomed again. So people are getting broken hearts. So yeah. go to 19, think about 1994. <laughs> and for as long as you can, only listen to music from 1994. Mm -hmm. Really concentrate on only listening to music from 1994, only watching movies from 1994 only watching TV shows from 1994 and only reading books from 1994. Yeah. Now, today's technology allows you to do that. Yeah. And don't go crazy about it. Now, here's the thing: you're going to see that on streaming services, they list the 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 num the year for a movie, and sometimes you'll get to the end of the movie and you'll see that they told you it was night from 1994. But it actually was from 1993. Don't worry about going. Right. Don't get crazy about it. But do your best. Yeah. Do your best to just 94. Do your best to use that as a guidepost. Mm -hmm. Really. And with, with, with streaming services and with listening to music on YouTube or YouTube music, it becomes easier. You can, you can enter into the YouTube 1994 songs. And then go playlist and then hit shuffle 1994 metal songs, 1994 alternative songs, 1994 classical music. Yes. Playlist. And mm -hmm. if whatever floats your boat, jazz, try to, and like I said, don't go crazy. But, and if barring that, only listen to music that you knew you were listening to in 1994, you remember where you were from probably in 1994. Were oh, you yeah. in college? Were you in graduate school? Were you on the job? What were they playing on the right? What were you listening to? Mm -hmm. Try to listen to that. Try to if you were if you were a gamer, what games were you listening to? Was there a book that you remember reading in the summer of 1994? Was there a book that you remember in the winter of 1994? Now listen, if 1994 was an S show for you, 1994 was the year I got divorced, 1994 was the year I yeah. relapsed and my mom died. Okay. Pick another year. How was 1992? How was 1984? You know, yeah. try, but just try and think of what I would recommend is for this year, because we're on a four, you want to go with fours and nines. Fours and nines. Okay, so folks, note that down. Your, your years are 1999, mm -hmm. 1994, 1984, and 1979 are all choice years. Yes. So and and you can do it for a day or two. See how long you can go. Mm -hmm. And trust me, what you're going to do is you're going to see. First of all, you're going to discover some undiscovered classics. You're going to say to yourself, "Oh yeah. man, you know what I mean." 1979. Yeah. And if you only say to yourself, "I'm only going to listen to music from 1979," I'm only going to watch movies from 1979, and you don't normally do that. You're gonna find yourself watching some funky, funky music and some funky, yep. funky movies from whatever, and you're gonna be like, "Dang, I didn't know I was such a big fan of whatever." Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, on the books, one thing that I, I've, along with okay, on the kit model thing, uh, because of the experience I had with building a replica of my dad's pickup truck, now I'm on this path of I'm going to build a kit model of uh, uh, each of my family members' cars that they had back in the 70s. Yeah, I got to, I got to check my um, but, 
it's okay. Right, and with the process, yeah, as part of this process, I take I make spells when I watch these movies from certain years. Oh, oh, I took them all out, damn it, because there's a movie, there's a mm -hmm. horror anthology, and one of them features who's that? There's a blonde actor, he was in 976, he was in Transylvania, nine something something. Oh. The blonde guy. He was obviously Ed, Jeff Gold. Ed Begley? No. Ed Begley, yeah. Ed Begley Jr. He was in Jr., a horror yeah. anthology, and yeah. he restores an old car. Uh -huh. And he discovers oh, yeah. that restoring yeah. the old car allows him to go back in time. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's that's a classic um, uh, TV anthology that was on, and and that runs. You can. You can I think the anthology movie is streaming, but you can find it on YouTube also. And yeah, yeah absolutely. Exactly of that. It's like but um, you mentioned books. What I do, what I've been doing is um, I look for books I read, you know, decades ago, but I look for the, the edition, the specific edition that was out back then. And when I find them, it's it's this I, I literally get dizzy. I, I physically get dizzy because I'm looking at this. Uh, I, I'm right now. What makes me think of that is Mary Stewart's The Last Enchantment, and the one from the '70s. It had this gold foil type of cover, and it had King Arthur the painting, you know, on there and stuff. But you know, when I find an edition that I is the one that I actually had decades ago, I get this weird dizzy reaction um, because it. It just draws me in. I've, I've experienced the same thing in antique shops. I'll go to an antique shop and I'll, I'll do a particular thing, whether it's a shoe from 100 years ago or, or a piece of china or whatever, I'll have this weird, weird reaction. So these objects and these things. Yay. What's that? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, because it's shoes in China? <laughs> well, listen, was, um, <laughs> I resisted for so long, baby. But if you, listen, you said, look, hold on. But but the thing is, find the relics. The point is, is to find the relics of your own life. You know, go find the exact edition of that book you read. Go, you know, go find, you know, if, if you if you get a piece of music, you know, vinyl's getting popular again. You know, um, go go see if you can find the the actual record, you know, like you owned, um, you know, but, but identify the relics in your life or, or, you know, build a, a kit model of something that, you know, replicates it. And I think, you know, um, uh, people would be surprised at how intense the, um, the, the, the result will be their experience of this phenomena that we're talking about simply because the memory theater in their head, um, this is an interface with that, really. It, it 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 really is this intense interface with it. So, for what that's worth, so we are at the uh, hour point, believe it or not. So, are you you willing to take some questions for a half hour? Absolutely. Okay. Take some Let questions. Me. Where? I'm going to open up from the live chat here. And uh, folks, you know the rules. Please uh, put your comments if you want them to be acknowledged or your questions if you want them to be asked. Put them in all capital letters. That's because there's lots of side conversations always going on in the live chat. And I want to know that you are asking me or, or CW a question or you are making a comment that you want us to acknowledge. So you guys know the rules. If you're new here, please all caps, questions, and comments as... Uh, our friend Nick N says here, questions in all caps. So um, anyway, did you have a, did I interrupt a thought or anything while we're waiting for a question? No, not really. Yeah. I, but okay. the only thing I would say is that not only can you, it is very important to the, there's always been the concentration on things that actually bring you back. But what I always say is this, is that not only is it your specific memories, your specific additions, that is that will bring you directly back. But I always believe in the collective unconscious so it's the the things from 1984 if 1984 was was important to you you can go back and experience for part of the thing for me is filling in the blanks the things that you dreamed about thought about but never got to experience you'd be amazed that also what 
you didn't see because some things what i've experienced is seeing things from 1984 that i knew about then seeing them and wondering how is it that i feel as though i did see this yeah yeah okay that's 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 very interesting what what also comes to mind as you're saying that is you know how many times in our lives have we had that weird feeling that we're being watched by some invisible eyes and what's the possibility that it is ourself down the road doing this experiment looking back in on something we experienced and it's the future self that is seeing more that our original self missed yeah. have you ever really looked at your hands man have what have you ever really looked at your hands man oh yeah <laughs> Are you referring to my a weird experience that I talk about? I'm, Not, I'm referring to the weird experience that everyone. It's a it's a classic. You ever really look at your hands, man? You when people are dropping acid, you ever really look at your hands, man? Uh, oh wow, really? Because in 1979, when I had my weird enlightenment experience, I woke up and the first thing I did was hold my hands up, and my thought was, "These are not my hands." But that's another discussion. We have oh. a. Uh, uh, we have a question here, like uh, Nick of Time says, like if in 1994 I was listening to The Doors, do I listen to The Doors or Nirvana? You you could listen to both, either, really. Because they existed. Yeah, it, it really, like, you know, don't, and like I always say, it's like the rules are meant to be, you know, not hard and fast. Think about it the way you want to think about it. The point is this, is that the vibe is this. We're going back to 1994. So what is 1994 for you? What's going to bring you back to 1994? If 1994 was all about the doors for you and you were and that's that's going to do it, then that might be it. But here's the thing. That, there's a lot of 1964, 1968 energy to the doors, whereas Nirvana, we know, it's 1994. Mm -hmm. So I would say listen to Nirvana. And then also every once in a while, if Nirvana and Pearl Jam are driving you up the wall and you just can't stand it anymore, throw on the doors because they were also there in the background. You know what I mean? They're going to play the doors in the 1994 episode of the Simpsons. It, and don't drive yourself batty. It's supposed to be fun. It's like, you know, yeah. Uh, magic without tears. We're well, in the in the to it, to drive ourselves up the wall, we're right. here to have a good time, fun time experience. Well, I was going to add that the the Doors movie by Oliver Stone had only been out a couple of years in 1994, so the Doors, you know, happened to have a relevance to 1994 at that time as well. So, and and 1990. Here's the thing about the 20 year nostalgia loop. 1994 was only was just basically 1974. They're going to tell you that Nirvana. What the, the 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 cliche is to say that alternative rock was punk rock coming to its ascendancy, but that's a, that's just a corporate lie because the the all the people in alternative land wanted to feel as though well, punk rock was more artistically appealing to them than rock and roll because rock and roll is working class. But the fact of the matter is that if you listen to Nirvana and Pearl Jam and, and Soundgarden, there's absolutely, there's nothing punk rock about that at all. They just don't want to feel as though that that they were that the that the, the corporals didn't want to feel as though that they were espousing working class culture because they were a feet wine drinking, cheese puff artsy fartsies but the fact of the matter is there's nothing that at all punk rock about nirvana it's all just 1970s rock it's all it's just that a grunge is 19, 19, 1994 music is just 1974 music and yeah. it's just craft work from 1974 anyway yeah. Philip Blair asks, might future Walter Bosley go back to 1979 in a loop multiple times like a Groundhog Day that lasts longer? Again, that's a lengthy conversation that I have okay. had on here and I've written about. I personally have proposed a hypothesis that I have done that, but physically at the I, CW, I have this. I don't know if you've heard me talk about it, but I have this particular hypothesis that we all can travel back in time at the point of our death um, when we pass into that other side uh, we one of the options we have is to go back and relive that life we just ended 
and there's other intricate details that you know I think are involved in there. The, but that's the basic thing. And and I have hypothesized that the reason why I opened my eyes and said these are not my hands. It wasn't that they weren't mine. It's just that they were my younger hands, which I had not seen in decades. You know, so it's like, whoa, these aren't my older guy hands that I just died with. These are my 16 year old hands, you know, and uh, it, 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 but it's a whole story, a whole other story. So I find this intriguing that this thing, you know, with the hands is, is actually a thing, you know, um, and what's especially what should be especially what's interesting to me is that is that 1979 came up because I was I only recently came up with discovered that 2009 that the 30 year and 50, 30 year loop being intersected with the 15 year loop was 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 particularly important and that that drew me into 1979 so. Yeah, and uh, there, there's, uh, you know, I know that I'd probably focus on that year because I had a personal weird experience, but, you know, 79 seems to have been a, a big um, threshold year for a lot of people. Um, of course, yeah. it's the last year of that particular eventful decade. Naturally, you know, I, I think maybe we're, some people are looking at 79 the way a lot of people looked at 1969, you know, in my mind in my life 1969 was this big landmark year and then you know when we made the jump into 1970 it was as we discussed earlier it's this big distinct you know different world so johnny side hey he asks uh when doing the chrono magic 20 nostalgia loop keep in mind any addiction issues you may have had i had to stop in 2019 20 because of that reason yeah, absolutely. What he's what he's what Jonas is talking about because Jonas is a is a is a is a dyed in the wool Chrono Magic follower, and he's he's been been you know with me since since Jump Street. But if you do have addiction issues, you need to know and understand that going back and doing these sort of experiments. If you're going back to a year, or if you're if you're experimenting with with listening to, it's triggers. Mm -hmm. If you know that a particular Ooh. If you listen to the Grateful Dead uh -huh. when you were getting high, then, or if you were a, a techno dance machine in your ecstasy heyday, then it's you got to be aware of that fact. Or if 1998 was the year that you relapsed, then you know, bear in mind that you might want to listen to or go for a different year. And there's no problem in doing that. And also, you got to be aware of yourself and, and, you know, be mindful of that. If you start noticing that your itch is getting itchy, mm -hmm. it's not worth it. Right. Go and do something else. Come yeah. back to the present moment. Splash yeah. the water on your face because nothing matters more than Isn't staying straight. But I would say yeah. this. Part of the reason that, that I engaged in this practice is this, is that when I got clean and sober, and I particularly got cleaner and sober recently, I, I'm, I'm two years off of, of alcohol, but I'm only going on, going to be going on three months clean of cannabinoids, is you're, you can find a way to get spiritually high. You can find a way to trip yourself out with trip, without tripping out if you, if you want to. You know, you can get high on life. You can get high on time, but just don't get high on time. Right. Good. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, good advice. Good advice. Here's an interesting one. Nick of Time asks, uh, CW, are you familiar with the Shemitah, whatever it is, actually, seven-year cycle in Hebrew traditions, 7, 14, 21? Yeah, absolutely. This goes that this is like it's like Jubilee. It, it goes like it, it's involved with stuff like the the forgiveness of debts and stuff. I'm not I'm not particularly on the the seven year cycle. It's not it's not how I roll. But but I'm definitely like all cultures. A lot of cultures have different you know ways of demarcating time and breaking up time, um, and dividing things. When I since you know I was attached for a while. Part of the thing with this process is I was really attached to, because I came up with calling it the 20-year nostalgia loop since the 2000s, and I was going to write a book, 
And then when I started doing it on uh, in 2018 with the, the 20 year nostalgia loop and calling it that, I was always trying to make it fit to the 20 year nostalgia loop. But part of the part of my growing process in doing it was learning to let go and saying, oh, well, you know, there's also the 30 year loop and mm -hmm. and learning to say, well, don't be attached to things and 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 let things go and it, it, don't make it a a, a brand and and right. Got to let truth be truth, even if the truth is not the truth that you set up right. your camp on or you made all these notes on. Right. You know? So seven is not my number. It's not a number that I'm attracted to. But um, but I understand, you know, it, it's it's there, you know, and, and I'm I'm always down for debt forgiveness, especially my own. I, I think with the numbers. And you're making a very good point with, with this number stuff that we see. Um, always observe and note the numbers that you see, but don't lock yourself into those numbers because each, yeah. you know, a seven year cycle is, is for one thing, a nine year cycle, you know, um, governs another thing. So observe and note uh, so that you can recognize the patterns when you encounter them again. Uh, but never, never just lock yourself into the, the one thing or you're going to miss so much. You know, Nick N asks, can you imagine a different past and go back to that, I wonder, to skip timelines? I guess a different past than you lived or remember? Well, part of the thing that I think is that when, when you're engaged in this process is that you, like it's a great, what I talked about with filling in the blanks. There are things that I lived through 1984, I lived through 1985, I lived through 1989. But one of the things that I get to experience now is this. Like, so for example, currently I'm spending a lot of time in 1989. Mm -hmm. In 1989, I had a finite amount of money to buy, say, video games or to listen to music. But now and today with the internet culture and with, you know, I've got a currently have a video game system, a handheld video game system that I got off Amazon for, you know, little less than 150 bucks that literally has like almost every Sega Genesis game on it, every Nintendo game on it, every like, um, you know what I mean? It's a bootleg game, but you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And that just wouldn't be possible back when I was a kid, but now I can experience things that I couldn't experience. So in many ways I can go back and I can experience a, a kind of infinite 1989 so in many ways, it is an alternative timeline that I can go back and experience. It, it's kind of this supercharged 1989. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in many ways, it is a, it is an alternative timeline. It is an alternative, you know, 1989 that I'm experiencing, you know, now. I mean, right. of course, I you know, you can do all sorts of different things with it. You can confront a memory. You can have an alternative memory. It is what it is. I mean. You know, my whole thing is this, is that I'm not here telling people that that I'm I'm trying to tell people that I'm some sort of, you know, deep shaman that is trying to take you on a journey of self-discovery and, you know, you know, rebirth you and, and tell you how to confront, you know, your dad demons. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we're, we're, you know, ways to experiment with, you know, tripping out on time. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And just experience effects. So, yeah, absolutely. It's it's just, um, again, you, you know, it, it's you're going back, you're mining your own mind um, to for, for and, and you can do this for a variety of reasons. It can just be for comfort, for the pure nostalgia trip of it. It can be to go back and understand something more about yourself. Um to understand better something you did in the past, whether it's a good thing or a thing you regret or, you know, something that you just can't quite place uh, what happened. Um, so it, it has very personal uses. And I think we both want to emphasize, I believe every living, breathing human being can do what we're talking about. We are not special because we each have encountered our own weirdness with this. We're not special, um, which is something that you and I also agree that there's too many voices in this community that try to pass themselves off as, well, I can do this, but you know, the rest of you lowly plebes right. cannot. I can't stand that. 
You know, um, I think psychic uh, abilities to the degree that they're real, every single one of us possess the potential for that. It, none of us are special in right. in that regard. So anybody, I think, can uh, can do this. Let's go and, to. And, you're just, and, what, and what you're going to do is you're doing this and nothing may happen. You just may end up listening to groovy music from 1989 or and that's cool you may too. one day turn on YouTube, open the newspaper, talk to your grandmother, and she might say, they might say, or the newspaper might turn up and say, this individual born in 1989 did this discovery or something, or a satellite for the, was originally launched in 1989, crashed into the this this location, and you notice that that location. Uh, corresponds to the Sunset Hotel, and you just watched a movie called The Sunset Hotel from 1989 last night. You know, something marvelously weird, inexplicable, and unexplainable might happen that when you try to describe it to your friends, they go, wait, what? Coincidence who? Yeah. But you'll know and understand, and you just will know and understand. Yeah. Yeah, True. Philip Blair asks, do you remember any past lives? Have you tried picking a year from before you were born? What, what's your, I, you know, as far as the past life thing goes, I have my own uh, theoretical explanation for what I think that might actually be. But what's your answer to that? I don't I don't have any past life memories that I can recall. Any, any sort of experiences that I've had about, you know, past lives, have, I've, I've, I've just attributed, attributed to fantasies. And I have no had any, no real specific, past life experiences that I could point to. Now, have you tried uh, picking a year from before you were born to focus on listening to the nostalgia stuff? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely watched, uh, seen things and, and kind of had limited, my general thing, I, my general experiences have been with looping to things for years that have been post my birth. But I have had significant moments and sp spent significant time concentrating on the year of 1975, the year that I was born. Mm -hmm. So, sure. um, but, but I, but I've meditated upon 1975 many times, you know, in my life. So there's, there's a lot of built up, you know, energy mm -hmm. there. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I found it's an interesting exercise. Um, in recent years, what I've been doing is I go and I look at what was what were the cars that were released or were the number one cars the year I was born. You see this as a yep. meme. You know, what was the what was the number one song on the charts the the day I was born? That kind of thing. And and anybody can do this. And I think it gives you a perspective of your own lifespan because you know, me being born in 1963. I can't consciously remember crap about 1963. I was born a month and 20 days before JFK was assassinated. Mm -hmm. And, but when I go back, I'm like, Oh, that's the era I was born in. I, I was born less than 20 years after world war two ended. Exactly. And I never yeah, that, thought of my yeah, life. That, in those that'll trip, yeah. Like that'll <laughs> trip. Yeah. And then you'll like, you'll do things like, you know, like, like that's part of the thing where you talk about like, how like the, the notion of the passage of time and the passage of 10 years or 20 years means nothing when you realize like, you know, the, the amount of time that passed between the assassination of, of JFK and the, and, and the death of Hitler. And then yeah. you do that same time period between like, say now and then, and there'll be like nothing. There'll be like bubble gum. It's like nothing, nothing. Well, happens, and, and yeah, like, uh, uh, you know, when I, again, this, this is along the lines of things we've kind of already said, but, you know, w when you're a kid, wow, 10 years was this was 10 years this. And I think the distinction between the eras really played into that. But when I think how fast the last 20 years have gone for me from age 40 to 60. And I love those things where they say there's a greater amount of time between um, uh a more recent event and where you are now than there was between this historical event and in a period earlier, like, right, right. well, like for instance, that, you know, there was only 18 years between the end of world war two and my birth. And there's been 30 years since 33 years since my son was born. 
<laughs> right. Like, it's like things like that. It's like, <laughs> what? You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's stuff like that that puts things, puts certain things in the perspective. Exactly. Yeah. So, hey, Johnny Side says, I'd like to wish my wife, Renee, Mrs. Johnny Side, a happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy Mrs. Birthday, Johnny Renee. Side. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Good, uh, good subject for, uh, you know, a birthday. Uh, so here we have, um, no chat about auditing. They are always listening. <laughs> the Scientologists. <laughs> Absolutely. They are always, always listening. Let's see. Those are our left. Um, Philip Blair asked, what happened when you focused on the year you were born, CW? You, Anything? You look, I mean, the, the focusing on the year that I was on born, I mean, it's it's not much other than you, you get you get to, first of all, it's like, depending on, it's harder for me, the the further back in time I go, the harder it is to stay there, this to stay there, mm -hmm. because the further back in time you go, the technology changes. So I like video games, I like movies, I like role playing games, I like different stuff. Mm -hmm. The further back in time you go, the technology changes. So video games from nineteen seventy five is like. Pong, you you've got you don't have any options. You have movies, you have books, but you know there, there's not a lot of things. You you get narrower choices. There's electronic music, but there's not the same amount or variety of electronic music. It, it just becomes harder, and it's just it's just different to 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 stay there to have your your attention be held. I, it's it's interesting to do and i do that i do it for the exercise as an intellectual pursuit but i don't have any sort of mystical thing we talk about that that what walter just said you know listen to the to this to the number one song the day that you were born i've done that but i gotta tell you so I, if i remember correctly the, the number one song in the nation the day that i was born i think it's like raindrops keep falling on your head or some of this you know terrible piece of music <laughs> you know like do the hustle it's like you know what i mean it's like you know it is what it is but look hey yeah 1975 the year that i was born was the year that you know vietnam ended yeah right yeah but then you know we talk about the nostalgia loop you know what i mean it's like that's that's where we get to it was you know it's like 10 years later is when you know i really realized that it's really like the 15 year nostalgia loop because if you go to 1984 and 85 and 89 that's when you get all the vietnam movies yeah right? full metal yeah. jacket platoon rambo it's 15 years later that people are ready to go back and say we're good we gotta all talk about vietnam well, you know what? What threw me into a? I, I have a, an avid interest in in Vietnam now, and it wasn't because I was a little kid when it was going on. It wasn't because when I was, you know, a youth, I remember, you know, the the Vietnam vets that had just, you know, come home and the stuff they went through. None of that. It was forty years after its release, Apocalypse Now, clicking in my psyche. Because I realized, oh, I this, oh, I get this story, and that experience, that intense mental experience with turning on to Apocalypse Now, you know, um, now interests me in Vietnam, the war that was going on and it was starting up, you know, during my childhood. And it's weird. Again, here we go back to the arts, right? It took something, you know, artistic to. To reach in there and and do that, so um, yeah, it's um, it's it's wow. That's uh, hi guys. Do you believe this is Todor Kolev? Hi guys, do you believe there is destiny when looking at your high school photographs from now? Like for instance, say uh, CW, go back and you think to that person you were in high school. Um, uh, is there anything between then and now that you would say, well, gee, it looks like I was destined to do that or be this or such? The only thing that I could tell you is that I remember, you know, look, we, we are who we are. And, and, you know, this this notion of, you know, time has always been something that has always been kind of an obsession of, of mine. And I can tell you there was this thing called Project Graduation that an attempt to stem the amount of uh, alcohol related deaths, uh, they had this thing where they they took us 
and bust us to this like all night kind of party. And I remember talking to my friends and being like, this is high school. We're going to remember this is our high school, like last night of high school. This is project graduation. We're going to remember this, you know, moment for the rest of, you know, our lives. And, you know, this is it. This is the golden age. This is, you know, the, 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 this is the apex or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying this to a friend of mine, Sam, and then being like, I don't know, like not like relating to it or like being like, what are you talking about? Like, we don't know what's going to happen next. How can you say that this is going to be this great memory? Or how can you say that this is going to be important? And just like, just knowing, and I was always returning to that moment and knowing that there was always something about me that was always kind of fixated on chronologies, memories, mm -hmm. and the passage of time and the recording of histories and the recording of moments, you know what I mean? I was always the guy that that not only, like I bought the yearbook, not only for my graduating class, but I bought every yearbook for the years that I was in high school and saved them. Okay. You know what I mean? And I'm and like the same thing with like collecting books. Like I don't just buy the, the three main core rule books for an edition of Dungeons and Dragons. I tend to like, I tend to be a completionist. Like I tend to, the things right. that I get, I tend to want to know them. And like, I almost as if you that. knew, almost as if you knew that the more complete set of data you had, the easier it would be to reach back to it. Maybe I just, you know, I'm just, I've always been this notion of like information and like wanting to know about, right things and histories you know yeah, so yeah. to a degree one uh one thing I'll, I'll throw out there i was going to mention earlier you were talking about having a hard time staying um in a i have a suggestion for anybody who's experienced that or, or will experience that but you've got to use it carefully i advise with caution um and we get this i believe from, or I think I've observed from Richard Matheson in what he was trying to communicate through Somewhere in Time, the famous film in the book. And that is his character um, has an emotional anchor that serves to be that thing that it anchors him in and pulls him back in time. That, of course, in the case of that story, is that he falls in love with the picture of the younger, you know, the younger picture of the actress. And Elise McKenna. Now, if if you're anyone out there that might experiment with this, if you want to go back in your own life, think of someone you really want to see again. It may be a deceased parent or sibling just or a friend, but think of somebody you knew in the Target era that you really want to see again and talk to again and use that as your emotional anchor. And that could help help you be able to keep a stronger footing when you're in that headspace, when you're, you're doing this. I don't know. Um, you know, and then if you do that and you get results, contact us and, you know, let us know, um, right. you know, what you, uh, we got time for one more question and that is from Nick N. Um, do you use any sort of psychometry? I do on objects of the time to help out or similar like photos, etc. Do you do anything like psychometry? Well, what I what I always tell people is it's a little bit distinct, I think, from what you're describing. Is like so I go back for extended periods of time. So my whole thing is to stay there, not just for you know a period of time like a deep dive, like you might be doing for like an emotional mm -hmm. momentum of staying like there for like you know a deep like gaining this emotional. I go there for days. So the whole thing of like the psychometry or objects is is I'm reading a book. I'm only reading books from a particular era. I'm only listening to music for a particular era. So there's CDs, there's comic books, there's the TV show, there's the movie. So it, it, you're sustaining yeah. your, your time there for as long as you can. So I go, mm -hmm. originally, I would only be able to be in a place or a time period for like a day or two. Mm -hmm. I've been in 1989 for like five days. Wow. That's great. But, you know, look, I mean, at the same time, look, at the, you know, do I have I have I have I seen YouTube clips about, you know, the current shenanigans regarding Donald Trump and Joe Biden? Absolutely. I talk to my kids and they, they throw whatever they when I get in the car with them, they're going to put on whatever music they want to put on. Sure. I don't drive myself crazy. But at the same right. time. But at the same time, you know, you, you, you get a sense of when it's when it's when you're you, when you've you've had enough. 
but then you know so that's why you also don't drive yourself crazy like don't buy don't buy 15 new books off amazon because the likelihood is by the time they get shipped to you you're going to be sick and tired and you're going to be wanting to go to 1993. Exactly. Exactly. Use yeah. what you own. But yes. It gives you an opportunity to organize your stuff. Organize your stuff. You end up organizing your stuff by year. My bookshelves are beyond planet organized. But then I look a little bit in retentive because people are like, wow. Yep. Yeah. Well, hey, that's... Uh... That's our time for this episode. Uh, Ironically, CW and um, <laughs> and we got to do this again because this is just a start of uh, you it. know having this discussion for for the viewers here at my audience. And uh, I thank you for taking the time to uh, to come on and talk about this stuff. I thank you for finally having me on. It's only taken like five years. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, we, I know. We were there. We were there when David Will. Listen, we were there when David Wilcock debuted the hover cars. Yes, we were there yeah. when he debuted the hover cars. Like, talk about a time loop. That was like the Jetsons were like what 1962. Yeah, man, that guy was late to the game. We were like <laughs> hover cars. We were both blown away. We thought he was joking. We were like hover cars. We were like, are you what? And and still hasn't delivered. But that's another episode. That's another. Oh discussion. my god. So, well, like I said, thanks, and um, I, I definitely want to have you back on to talk about this stuff. You know, in in greater depth and go farther with it. So um, uh, we will uh, we will make that happen. Tell me, yeah, absolutely. I'm down. All righty. Have a good night, and uh, we will talk soon. Sounds good. All righty. Okay, folks, another uh, uh, fantastic uh, discussion, I think, on time and time phenomena. Like I said, I've been wanting to have CW on um, to talk about this, and uh Finally, you guys introduced, if you if you haven't, go back. If he still has them posted, archived somewhere, I'll find out if he does and uh, put a link up if if possible. But if you can, if he's got them archived, go back and watch his, watch his nostalgia time loop discussions for, you know, greater details and try this yourself. And like I said, be careful if you use an emotional hook into your past. Um, uh, specifically if you use people who have passed on because um, the state of mind you need to be in and what your consciousness is tapped into when you're doing this could leave you open to um, other things that could very well masquerade as that loved one you think that you're going back in time to discuss. This is the, the risks and hazards of playing with this kind of stuff because whether you think it's real in that real material sense, or whether you think it's, you know, a, a mental exercise thing, it can still take you into a mental zone that um, you got to be careful with because, you know, it could lead to depression or madness or things like that. So, you know, always be careful with this stuff and realize that, you know, the human mind is extraordinary. And, you know, uh, remember John Lilly told uh, Tim Leary that, after he did the isolation tank uh, experiments on LSD at Leary's suggestion, he did tell him nothing he experienced on LSD um, uh, matched what he experienced without it, just going into the human mind. So that's what all this is about. I want to thank everybody for being here. This was a great turnout. And um, I'll see you when I'm with, uh, with Ma when Malia and I return this Saturday. Last Saturday, we were out of town on some important Empire of the Wheel business, which I'll be sharing with you soon enough. And um, we'll be back this Saturday with Malia and Walter. And um, anyway, see you then. See you on Saturday. Thanks again, everyone. <laughs>